Hello, this is Professor BRB, and today we are going to learn how to use the new paragraph shading uh, feature in InDesign Creative Cloud to make this bullet list uh, look really special. So uh, let's look what we started with here. Uh, here we just have some plain Jane type, and uh, it really doesn't look too interesting right now. Uh, the first step uh, in making this bullet list look good is simply to add the bullets and edit the type. Now InDesign has had uh, a bullet list feature for a long time and if we just uh, select this list here, go to our paragraph, controls, uh, I'm going to turn show hidden characters on so that you can see that there is a paragraph return at the end of each one of these lines. And if I stay in my paragraph uh, settings here and just go up here and click on bulleted list, I just get a plain bulleted list. Just looks like a typist did it. Um, you can also create a numbered list this way, with the numbered list, and uh, it, it's it's certainly much quicker than typing it by yourself, but it's not really wonderful looking, and I want to make it look wonderful. So um, let's see how we can do that. We want to customize this bullet and make it something more interesting and add some color to it. Uh, and then we'll be using a paragraph style to make it all come together. First, just put your cursor in the first line. We're just going to style this first one, and then we'll create a paragraph style. So here's what I'm going to do. Just hold down my Option key, or I think it's the Alt key on a PC, PC and click Bullet List. And I'll get the Bullets and Numbering dialog box. List type bullets, this is correct. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that you can add any typographic character uh, to this to be used as a bullet. And I've done a few here. I could have a check. Uh, I added that. Uh, I could have a kind of a fancy asterisk that came from Zopf Dingbats. Uh, or I can have this leaf, which is an ornament from Minion Pro. So let's see how I did that. Um, I'm just going to cancel out for a minute here so I can start again without that selected. Uh, so to add another uh, character to this little grid here, you just click here, Add, and then you get to choose your typeface. Uh, Myriad Pro really doesn't have much uh, for this. A lot of people like to use Zopf Dingbats for this, which is a great idea. Uh, and if you choose Zopf Dingbats, you have all of these nice little Dingbats to choose. You can use any picture font like Webdings or Wingdings. And in this case, I'm going to use Minion Pro because I know that has a couple of very pretty little ornaments in it. I'm going to go down here and look for them. And this is the one I'm going to use, and I've already put that in. But just to demonstrate, I'm going to choose this one and click Add and then OK. And there it is. So now I could also choose that one if I wanted. So I have all these different choices. I want to use this one, and uh, but I want to make it a color. So if I want to do that, uh, before I cancel out of that dialog box, um, I'm going to go here and choose New Character Style, and I'll call it maroon, go to character color, and choose that nice color, and just click OK. So now you can see maroon is applied to that, and this, this looks really quite nice. Um, I also would like to indent it a little bit, because these are short lines that I have here, and if I zoom out a little, you can kind of see that maybe I have too much space over here and not enough over here. So um, I can control the left indent here. You have a lot of controls here. You can control alignment. 
The default is text after a tab, which is caret T. Uh, you also have other choices here, like M dash, N dash, hair space, thin space, but I'm going to leave it at tab. And um, when we go to left indent here, uh, we can just click the up button and just repeatedly click it until I get this over to some place that I think is going to look good. So say right about there at five pikas. That looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to click OK. Um, I'd also like to style this text. And I'm going to uh, put it in Caslon Pro. Uh, if you don't have Caslon Pro, that's fine. You can, uh, let's go semi-bold italic here. Uh, you can choose any other uh, type font that you want. Uh, and just have my cursor in here to create a paragraph style. Let me just reset my typography space here. And choose a new paragraph style. And I will call it... Mozart bullet list. Uh, and I, I'm just going to leave everything the way it is and make sure that I have checked add apply style to selection. Okay. So now nothing could be easier. Just going to select all of that and paragraph controls here. There's Mozart bullet list. Bingo. So that looks pretty good. And actually, I like it just like that. But we're going to take it a step further because I want to show you something new that um, is uh, brand new uh, in Creative Cloud. And now that we have a paragraph style, uh, we can edit that style. And you'll notice if you have not been in, in the paragraph style or the paragraph uh, dialog box recently, you'll notice we've got something new. And uh, the new thing that we have is paragraph shading. It's right under paragraph rules. And it works in kind of a similar way. So let's go ahead and choose paragraph shading. And just like when you turn on uh, rules, uh, you just click shading on. And the default is black, which we certainly don't like. So I'm going to choose this much lighter color here. And you can apply a tint as well. Let's go to 90%. That's fine. Uh, you can choose any color that's in your swatches panel. And the default, uh, because I have so many paragraph returns, is giving me the striped effect, uh, which isn't what I'm looking for in this case, although it might be. And if I take it down to leading, that's going to uh, give me a more solid uh, look there, which is what I'm after. Uh, I can also adjust the borders of this right now. I don't really like the way it's going. Um, you can also have the, the shading be uh, limited to just the length of the text, but I don't think that would look good at all in this case. So I make sure that I break this little chain here so that I can have different values. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit to the bottom, right? Just add a little bit down there. And then I want to make a negative value on the left and the right. And once again, I can just kind of do this until I think I like it. So maybe I'm going to do minus two pikas here. And I'm going to try minus. That minus is important. I'm going to copy that and paste the same thing in here. So let's... Uh, put on preview on and off, and see how that looks. I wanted the value to be the same because I wanted to have the same gap here and here. I thought that would look a little bit better. So uh, I have now added that to my uh, paragraph style. So it just becomes part of the style along with the bullet list. And maybe I'm going to change the name of the style now. I'm just going to add the, the word shaded to that so that I know that, that is my shaded style. And bingo, that looks pretty great. Now, once you've gone to the trouble of creating this style, uh, any time, oops, the daisy, uh, any time you have another 
bullet list that you wish to style, like here we're kind of back, back to the beginning here, all you have to do is apply that style and with one click uh, the whole thing comes in. So I think this is a really fun way to use the new paragraph shading uh, feature. Um, I'm going to uh, follow this up in just a few minutes uh, with an additional video that will show you how to add just a little bit more to this by putting in this swash drop cap, which I think adds a very nice, we're kind of going with a classic typography look here because uh, after all, this is uh, Mozart. And I think that that kind of uh, typography uh, reflects the subject matter very well. 